Um, this evening, we are going to discuss um, two types of wisdom, two types of wisdom. Can you all hear me? Can everybody yes. hear me? Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to take the scripture, uh, James 3, 13 through 18, while I know it's many scriptures that had talk about wisdom but today we're just going to focus on James 3 and the two type of wisdoms is godly wisdom and worldly wisdom um, the word wisdom appears 154 times in the Old Testament and 54 times in the New Testament so I would say that wisdom is important. <laughs> um, and I meant to do this before I, I normally do this anyway. I wanted to look up the word wisdom. And uh, I have here, it says, what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Wisdom and knowledge. So it says knowledge and wisdom are two distinct concepts that are often used interchangeable but hold different meanings. While knowledge refers to the acquisition of information and facts, wisdom involves the application of knowledge along with experience, insight, and good judgment. I like the last part. <laughs> um, let me just say that um, Worldly wisdom is not all that it cracks up to be. In 1 Corinthians 3, 19 through 20, it reminds us that true wisdom comes from aligning our thoughts and action with God's perspective, rather than relying solely on human understanding. So that particular verse reads, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. The Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So clearly there is a distinct difference between worldly and godly wisdom. And so James kind of starts out, kind of tells us, the difference. So if someone has uh, James 3 and uh, would read 13 through 17 for me, and then I'll go into the question that I have. Um, this is the NLT. If you're wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you're bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambitions in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Okay. Amen. So thank you. Uh -huh. Um so let's let's start with verse 13. Because you want to start with the godly wisdom <laughs> first. 13 kind of starts with the godly wisdom. So we're going to start with that verse there. And it, it says, if you are wise and understand God's way, prove it 
by living an honorable life and doing good works and so on. That's it, 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 that's the good wisdom. But when you get down to verse 14, it kind of start, talks about the worldly wisdom. Uh -huh. So um, my first question is, what is the age of onset of wisdom? What is the age, or is there an age of onset wisdom? What do you think? Uh, I I like the question because you know I have this this discussion and argument all the time with uh, elders in the church and young people, right? That we make some assumption because young folks have not lived some form of life, and this is probably less in our church. I think we acknowledge our young people in our church in, in, a, in a number of ways and young people, young adults, um, but that in the church universal, there's often this young people, until you've had some experiences, you there's no way you can have wisdom. Um, and in some ways that simply you haven't, you don't know nothing because you ain't lived nothing, <laughs> right? Um, but if we're talking spiritual wisdom, that doesn't come from us and it doesn't come from just because we live the thing, but that it comes from God, then I think there is there is no no conversation about you ain't old enough, right? Because <laughs> what is you doing, man? I'm oh, you stretching. stretching. I, 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 I'm going to do the hookup now. I thought you was cute about to step or something. Anyway, <laughs> hey, Sam <Bill. laughs> Um That, right? Like God can give to the young as well as the old if yeah. God is trying to relay something to God's people. I mean, you know, Christ at 13, you know, stayed back because he had something to say, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. They they left uh -huh. him. They, he got lost in the crowd because right. they didn't expect him to be somewhere teaching. So right. I think we have to be, I, I don't know that, that you could honestly give an age, uh, maybe once you start talking, I don't know. And I, I would go with talking because sometimes uh, little Michael Hill, man, sometimes the way that young fella acts is not lived experience. He's three. No, but his ability, to, his ability to navigate his world around him. Mm. I, I mean, I've got to believe that spirit is talking to him in ways that, you know, are going to literally change the world. I believe that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my long way around saying I don't know that you could pinpoint an age. All right. Anyone else? And I agree with you, Shannon, when you say that uh, sometimes, not only in churches, even in families, people think just because you're old or or older that you know it all. Man, you don't, you don't ever get too old to learn. My mom talks to say that all the time. And so that means that you you don't know it all and um and so for us me working with three four and five year olds man that is uh, an experience because some of those young people i have one little girl in particular that she called a little girl a beat and she was four she's four so i told her to go sit down think about it and I'm gonna talk to her in a minute. So I, I called her over and I said, do you know what that word means? She said, yes. I said, oh boy. Uh, I said, what is it? She said, that's when girls call each other, uh, wanna, wanna be mean to each other and call each other that cause they don't like them. I said, oh. I said, so who have you heard say that? She said, well, a few people. So when I discussed it with her mother, her mother was like, Miss Fat, we live with my mom and my dad. We don't use that kind of language. And I said, okay, so who else is she around? You know, because she had the, she said it in a perfect context and said what she thought it meant, which wasn't too far off. From what That's it is. Not funny, man. You know? So yes, 
And wisdom, she sometimes says things, you know that she's around older people, like that little boy. Um, so being age has nothing to do with the wisdom. I don't think either. Um, it's, it's how how we as Christians live. Um, sometimes have a lot of impact on our children. Um, and they see, they recognize, you know, wisdom, you know, and uh, and I'm like Shannon, that little Michael, I told Michael, I said, Michael, he's going to be a preacher. He said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, you calling on the right person because he he's singing. Um, I love the Lord. Me and him, we sing the Lord. I love you, Jesus. And he said, Granny sing our song. I was I was floored because I didn't even think he remembered the song. And so we started singing. He knew the words. That's wisdom. So what we put out in the air, in the atmosphere, not just to children, but to adults even, um, shows that we have some spiritual wisdom, some godly wisdom. And sometimes at some point through our lives and even now, we've done, we've lived some type of worldly wisdom. We've done something that was not wise. I'm going to say that. And could have made a better decision in what we did. Um, so I'm like, Shannon, I just don't think there's an age uh, for godly wisdom. I don't. I think it's a spirit that... Um, and, and we go through stuff. Yes, we go through stuff. You know, I'm 77. I've been through a whole bunch more than Reverend Hancock and, and, and everybody on this, this phone as far as age, but that does not mean that I am wiser than anybody on this phone. And in, in a sense, everybody has wisdom in a different sense, spiritually and, and otherwise. Um, so... Yeah, I age, age has. You're talking. Um, Brother Sam, you just came on and we we're talking about um, two types of wisdom, godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. And I know you kind of came on late, but my question was, what is the age of onset wisdom? Just kind of wanted to bring you up to speed. And if you have anything you want to, and we're, and we're, say, study, we're studying from James 3, mm -hmm. uh, verses. Uh, okay. It's so funny because I think in one of the Corinthians, um, Paul says something about that, um, that God makes the worldly. World with wisdom look foolish. Yeah. And uh, I think that when it comes to just wisdom, you know, God gives it freely if you ask. But um, I guess what age was, I mean, sometimes age doesn't always equate um, wisdom, just like uh, Miss Pat said, because there are some old fools out here, like old, <laughs> old fools. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, and I think sometimes uh, I was watching some type of documentary. This unit was just describing um, when people are locked up, like when they go in at age 22 and they get out when they like probably like in their 40s or 50s, they still have that 22 year old mentality, even though their body is aged to age 50 or something like that. So we don't always equate you know, age to wisdom, but I really think being wise, um, I know it says in Proverbs, I cannot remember what verse, that, that you know, people surround themselves by wise people, you know, wise counsel, and that's how you become wise in my opinion, because, you know, there are, there are a whole lot of wise people on this call, you know, and I definitely defer to, to some of my, you know, some of my people when I have issues that I'll ask about, I'll ask one of y'all about, you know, what I'm going through and 
you know, I consider because because y'all showing fruits of being wise because I've been knowing y'all for so long and I would trust y'all wisdom over like a, over somebody I would just met, you know what I'm saying, over somebody that do that because because you have to discern people wisdom because you, you can't take everybody wisdom because everybody wisdom may not be what the Bible says would be in the certain wise. I wonder if they answer the question. Anyone else? Okay, so like I said, uh, verse 13 to me, well, verse 13 speaks of um, the godly wisdom. But as you read through the scripture, you will see where verse 14 kind of gets off into the worldly wisdom. Uh, it says, but if you harbor bitterness, envy, and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny it to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. So let's just stop there. Says, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfishness in your heart, that to me, well, it's, it's saying, in my opinion, that that's the worldly wisdom. That's, you look at the world and you, the things that's going on and you talk to different people and you can sense the bitterness in their hearts, the enviness in their hearts or whatever. So that's the worldly wisdom. That, that's the one that's unspiritual and demonic and it's not really thinking godly not living godly. The godly living is, you know, improved by living an honorable life, an example of uh, living with God, living with him, uh, understanding what it, his way of living. But if you're living that, un, that worldly wisdom, then you're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble. Um, godly wisdom is not focused on self and self preservation. Per person, I talk persevision. I probably say it wrong, but but rather it is focused on serving the kingdom of God. So it's not. When you hear godly wisdom, is 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 us wanting to build the kingdom of God? Worldly wisdom is like, eh, you know, what this is. This is my world, and we. This is how we gonna do it. You do have people that my world. That's that self selfishness that they're talking about. That you know, me, myself, and me. Um, selfish ambition in your heart, uh, bitterness. You're bitter towards someone because someone did something to you, or that envy. You envy that person because, you know, they know more than you, or they got this, or they have that. That that emptiness, that jealousy. So that's that worldly uh, wisdom, and that's not how God wants us to live. God wants us to live to build the kingdom of God. God wants us to live that honorable life that life to where we are an example to others. It, our walk matches our talk. Um, you know, you see people driving these nice cars and they're thinking, oh, I wish I had, I envy that, you know, they look at that nice car. I wish I had that or I wish I had that nice house. No, that's enviness. You, you know, you have to, um, If, if, if it's meant to be, it will be. And so I, I just think that um, having bitterness in your heart, and, I, and I've been there. So I'm just going to say at one point, I'm going to use myself of the bitterness and the anger or enviness in my heart. 
but because I came into the spiritual realm of God and learned about the difference between the worldly and the godly, I no longer think that way. I think I want to live this. I feel and I know I want to live this godly life. Uh, not envying because somebody can do something better than me or someone has something better than I can. So you have to kind of watch what's in your heart. It, it, what is your heart mode? What is your heart posture? And Billy always, when he was praying, he always said, let pray for wisdom. He said it all the time. Is that our prayer? Are we praying for wisdom? So um, it's kind of struck me as uh, in, important because of the way of the world now, the way things are going, the way things are happening. You have to use wisdom, discernment. Is that the same thing? Wisdom and discernment, the same thing? That's the question. I, I, I would say, well, I'm sorry. Let me let me stay out of that. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> oh, well. You know, I love this. I love this conversation of wisdom. That's my but you know, I, I was I was going to say too that uh, that you know it's just kind of amazing the influence that ungodly wisdom has, and then the, the influence that godly wisdom has. I mean, you can see some very talented people, great speakers, good positions, you know, the things that the world like. I mean, you look at this convention that's going on now, you know, uh, you know, I, you, you said in here, it's the word said that uh, it, it talks about selfishness and don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Mm. Now, selfishness is, you know, that's something we all have to deal with. And uh, without Christ in our lives, you know, we would be like the world. But, you know, I can go, you know, you look all through the Bible back, you know, these kings, you know, they was just selfish, you know, it, it, it's their way. And if it didn't go their way, you know, you think they, they would kill you, you know, it's just, just selfishness. And, you know, I just kind of see that a lot, you know, and it become a thing too that, you know, I think it's, it's a battle it, for self, even the Christian, if, if, uh, you know, if we don't watch ourselves, you know, we can kind of fall into, uh, you know, that selfish stuff too. I mean, it's in the church. That selfishness, it, it goes on in, in the church. But it, I think it said in here, it talks about yielding to others. Thought I saw that in here some someplace. Yes, it is. But, but, you know, just being selfish is 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 a thing that's really going on. It it's big time uh, yeah. now, and and it has a lot of influence. You know what's funny? The word influencer is definitely rampant these days on social media, and then our word, and you know, and so. I don't know what's been happening lately, but I feel like this Bible says been confirmation because I've been reading. I, I done read the whole book of uh, Acts all the way to Romans, and now I'm in Corinthians. And everything we've been talking about basically is what we're was was um was Paul been talking about where you know God's going to judge the heart of folks, and he said to those believers, don't believe big words or you know, signs and wonders because God's going to judge hard. You got to really understand, discern their actions because like you, like Mr. Holland said, um, even in the church, it's like, it's not even, sometimes it's not even preaching anymore. It's just more about motivational speaking 
you know, life, like more like life culture. But I think that if there's no spirit or truth behind those words or it's coming from a place of from the scriptures, it's not nothing's gonna change. It's just like you're gonna feel good about your situation for 30 minutes and then on a Tuesday evening, when you just that, that little that thing you've been struggling with, like you know, the enemy is gonna come and try to tempt you. It's like, what do you have to draw from? And it's just like, are you are you in your word? Can you discern? But but before you even to to discern something, what are you influenced by? What is going into your your eye gates? What's going into your ear gates? What what are you consuming? It's going. It's either going to reiterate the problem, like make you feel bad about it, or it's going to um, make you feel, oh, I know God got this. I'm going to give y'all like a small example. My mom has been sick in the hospital. Um, She has to go to surgery tomorrow and because she has MRSA, and they want to make sure that the MRSA didn't go to her heart valves. And when I tell you I didn't cry, no, just up and down, and I was cooking dinner yesterday, and I heard some of my spirit uh, uh, say, um, you know, words not going to add another day to your life. And I was just like, where did that come from? I, did, I wasn't thinking about that. And I was just like, I'm an ass ring, you know, I, I can't speak in tongues. I wanted to say, oh, shut you, you know, I can't say that, but. God was just telling me, hey, do not worry. I got your mama. And it's like, I guarantee you, if I had not been reading the word these last couple of days, or I, if I knew the word for myself, I knew that you know, God had to had to pick something up in my spirit, in my memory, to bring back to my, my forefront, I, I, I would have to, you know, I, I probably would have been still broken up in pieces. But just hearing those words, no, do not worry. It's not going to add another day to your life. And I think that you have to be influenced by the right things. What are you watching? So to kind of reiterate that, but that's, that's what I have to share. Reverend Hancock, was you going to say something? Probably, but they didn't, they didn't cover it. <laughs> that was deep. Yeah. I, well, let me say, I think I was going back to um, when Billy was talking about sort of this selfish, selfish ambition and what it causes, right? Our the Bible speaks about what causes quarrels among you, right? It's your your passions and your your inner desires that you've not resolved that are against what somebody else has. Um, that, right, I want what I want, you want what you want. And if we don't use godly wisdom, we're going to fight because we're going to fight for what we want. It's the very nature, apart from the spirit of God, to fight for what we want and what makes us feel good, what makes us happy in our spaces, you know, all those things, the the feel goods. And I think that's both sort of, I don't know, maybe how we were designed and um, how we've been nurtured in this world um, to go from as as part of the lineage of African folks, like our lineage is to care for people. Is it Ubuntu to, I live because you live. But in this Western culture, it is very much me first, then maybe me and mine, and then maybe y'all. <laughs> um, and so we have to walk our way back to, right? If I hurt, you hurt, right? Or if you hurt, I'm hurt. Um, if you're struggling, you know, I'm trying my best to carry it for you. And I think that brings us back to that place, Brother Holly, you said in verse 17, like this willingness to yield um, what is our immediate stuff for the betterment of the good. Now, that, those, that doesn't mean we become, um, oh, what's the word? It, 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 it doesn't always mean, and this is where godly, this, this is where wisdom is applied, right? Um, because wisdom is about application. How do you apply what God has said to you? Um, I can say that I would love to be open to everybody and to help everybody that I can. And that's depleting if I don't use the wisdom of rebuilding with the word, rebuilding with people that know the word and that know God, 
Um, I don't know, friends and I talk about finances. You know, I give people the shirt off my back and the dollars in my pocket. And then what happens? God is like, well, wait a minute, where'd your money go? I'm like, God, you told me to help people. He's like, ah, I had them. That, I, that was my, that wasn't your responsibility. And I'm like, oh, shoot, now I gotta go, right? I gotta go work this second job because doggone and I ain't got no more money because I gave it all away, right? So applying wisdom to our situations um, and, and knowing when God says, that's that's not yours. <laughs> Take your hands off that. I got that. So that we can be built up um and not always torn down. You know, I'm I'm a mess when I'm tired. I'm don't y'all say nothing. I'm a mess when I'm tired. Like I'm irritable um uh, because I've not had enough sleep. If I'm trying to do everything and do for everybody, I am tired and then I become irritable. So um, I have to use wisdom to say no to some things and to not jump and run because I see a need. Um, my daddy called me today and I was like, I'll get you tomorrow, bro. That like that stuff ain't an emergency. <laughs> you want Pepsi and, and cheese. It's not an emergency. Man. <laughs> you can get it tomorrow. Um, and then I, for a moment, I felt bad. I was like, well, no, nah, we ain't, we ain't going to fight about that. I'll get it to you. So just I think. Wisdom is about application. How do we apply what God has told us so that we talked about this, um, the kingdom is built up and is and is well, and we can draw people to the Christ we serve. And, and, uh, when, you, and when you say to just one more, when you say to that, that it's it kind of like a learned behavior, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just the, the example that you use about, you know, you see all these needs and we try to do the best we can, but sometimes this stuff is it, just overextends you. And you don't learn until you get out there and, and, and you fail. And then you realize, man, I'm tired all the time, you know. <laughs> and so I guess wisdom comes with, the, I don't know, trial, or failure. Or it's just it's a learned behavior. And, and Billy, I, 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 in, in some ways I agree. And then I wonder if, and Auntie and I have had this conversation um, before of what if before every, before we respond, right? There's always, a, there's something between the ask and our response. So in between those two things, what if we stopped and prayed and said, Lord, is this for me? Right? Because hmm. what we'll say is, well, God told us to help. Like we use that blanket. God said, go ye therefore for everything. What if we took the time ahead of time to determine what belonged to us and what belonged to to Buddy or what belonged to Lisa or what belonged to Sam, then maybe we wouldn't be so extended. We we can say that now, Brother Holly, because we've done it. Now we've learned it. But how do we teach our younger younger folks to not be so overextended in a world that if you're not exhausted, if you ain't on your grind, if you ain't addicted to the grind, you ain't doing nothing. Right? Like I don't want people like that because we've done it and we're exhausted. I don't want that for the next generation of church leaders. I want them to be to be well, to be able to pray first before saying yes to to the to and they don't get to the overextension. I don't know. I don't know. You know, um Sunday, um I was driving home and uh, you know, God spoke to me because I it mentioned that my heart was really heavy because I was going through some emotional things. Two things. One was stop trying to carry everybody's burdens because you have enough of your own. And the other was stop filling the void that you have with unnecessary things. Mm. Okay. So, um, wisdom, wisdom to listen when God speaks, wisdom to self care. You know, uh, that's one of the things uh, I mentioned, and I know this may not have anything to do with it, but I mentioned to Brother Holland, and I pray about for Shannon because of their caregivers is self-care. 
wisdom, like she said, wisdom to know when to and when not to. Um, and sometimes that's not easy. And then when you find out that somebody else is having a problem or they're going through something, I'm just going to say me, you pick up that issue and you're carrying it and you're carrying it and you're carrying it and it weighs you down. So there you are all tired because you, you're carrying out somebody else's issue and not thinking about yourself. So um, I think that's why I picked up this study because wisdom, I'm trying to learn wisdom. <laughs> It's a learned behavior, like you said. It is a learned behavior. Um, trying to, I can't carry everybody else's problems and my own. I can't carry. So wisdom is to say, sit down <laughs> and and take care of yourself. Sit down because you can't and allow God pray about it and allow God to do what He does. You know, um, and that's hard for me to do because I have that heart of compassion. Uh, I said this Sunday when we was on Sunday school about this guy that we saw at Church's Chicken. Well, I, you know, he just walked up to the car. He wanted to talk to us. Lisa, she's like, hmm. <laughs> she really, you know, but me, I didn't roll the window all the way down. Wisdom said, don't, you know, because, you know, you sitting here on 79th and Prospect or whatever. Not a good idea, but I had compassion for him, you know, and then here I am carrying his weight, his burden of him saying, I lost my mother, da, 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 and I'm already in that bereavement mode of my own, and so I'm carrying his too. So I just say that, you know, we do have to use wisdom, discernment. I, I keep going back to that word discernment because I'm wondering if that's the same thing. Wisdom and discernment, is, is that it's not the same thing? Okay. Thank you, Reverend Hancock, for saying no. But, you know, it's just, this wisdom thing is I'm struggling with right now. And so I brought it to the class because I feel like I praying that I can help someone and someone can help me understand the wisdom. Because I always, like I look at Auntie and I look at Shannon, I'm like, they, like Shannon, I'm, Shannon and I have been friends for years, you know, and I was like, she is wise beyond her 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 ears. Because of some of the things she tells me, I'd be like, what? Where she get this from? But what I realized, things that she told me way back, I see now. Why didn't I see it then? Because she told me I didn't want to. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow. But I'm just saying wisdom is, is important. Godly wisdom is important. Worldly wisdom is not. Worldly wisdom is going to get you in trouble. Godly wisdom is going to help build the kingdom of God. You have to live that honorable life, that life that says, I'm going to be an example. Humility is in there, I think, in that verse also. I think in the verse, yeah, it talks about humility comes from, that comes from wisdom. So that to me, like I said, verse 13 is speaking that godly wisdom. 14 and 15 speaks of that worldly wisdom. <clears throat> But then you get down to 17, and it tells you about the wisdom from above, which is that godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. I like how, how I like the difference um, where verse 16 talks about for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you're going to find disorder, right? Uh, when we talk about the disorder of this world, we talk about the disorders in our churches, in our families. Um, but godly wisdom produces peace, right? It says that in verse 18, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. And I, I think as we go into this next season of our church, like we have to keep that in mind that we don't want a disorderly church. 
Um, yeah. We want to raise folks who are leaning on the wisdom of God um, so that there is peace in our church, right? Who wants to come to church after being in the world uh, to mess? I used to hear auntie say that all the time. I've been been in the world. I don't want to come to church and all that mess. And when I'm church is over, I'm going home. <laughs> I never forget that. Um, and it's, that's that's real. Um, yeah. You want to be a part of a congregation where at the end of service, you're excited to see people and to, yeah. you know, hear what they have to say and not that they're going to pull you to the side and we've got to gossip about everybody in the church, right? That's uh -huh. disorderly and that's ungodly. Uh -huh. um, so I really appreciate in this place where so many of us are struggling um, with so many things in our lives that that this points us to when you lean on godly wisdom, there is peace. Mm -hmm. That thing I need for today. Like, God, today I need that. So I appreciate I appreciate you bringing that to me. Um, so as I was researching this, I found uh, a, a little nine-step guide on how to be wise. And it has some scripture to it. So... But I would advise to, if you would like to write them down, you can. So the first one says, seek God with all your heart. That's the first one. And the scripture they're using, you shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 9, 13. So we have to seek God daily hourly you know you have to seek him and you have to seek him with a pure heart don't come seeking him with a, a motive oh well I, this is why i'm seeking you because you said if i seek you and i ask you you're gonna give it to me well no no <laughs> that's not exactly what that means <laughs> you have to seek him with your whole heart that means you got to put away the selfishness that bitterness that enviness that just you gotta put all that away and seek him with your whole heart. So uh, the second one is trust in Christ Jesus. And it says, this is coming from Colossians 3, verse 16, where it says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly <clears throat> that you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. So let the message dwell. Um, I think about uh, when we went to the revival Friday night, we still can, I, I know Reverend Lisa can, still remember what Reverend Quinn said, remember Jesus and endure. Um, remember the word, remember that, and remember the message. Let the message of Christ dwell among you and teach you as it teach you. The second, the third one is studying God's word. And uh, this uh, one is coming from Proverbs 2, verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom from its mouth, his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The Lord will give it to you. And in James 1, I think it is, I can't remember what verse it is. It says, you know, it's, it's, it's wisdom that you need, that you want, ask for it, ask God for it. Solomon, when he took over and God came to him and said, what is it that you want? He said, I want wisdom. He didn't ask for no whole bunch of money, or houses, or cars, or any of that. He asks for wisdom. So, wisdom, like I said earlier, is important. The fourth one is coming from James 1, which I just said. Ask God for wisdom, and he will give it to you. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without fault, and it will be given to you. Well, without finding fault, I'm sorry, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So you can ask God for wisdom. 
uh, that's one of my prayers every day. Lord, uh, give me wisdom, guidance and wisdom for the day. Those two things, guidance and wisdom, that I do the right thing, that I, that honorable life that I'm supposed to live, walk, that I walk that walk, and I walk in humility. The fifth one is prayer, pray. Always about everything. Um, and the scripture for that one is, is, is Philippians 4, verse 6. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And I find myself saying this one a lot about don't be, do not be anxious about anything. Um, matter of fact, today at work, I was right there in this verse. The sixth one says, when you pray and study, listen. When you pray and study, listen. The verse, the scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which we all know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. The seventh one is seek guidance from godly people you trust. This one's also, the scripture is Proverbs 11, verse 14. And it reads, for lack of guidance, a nation falls. But victory is won through many advisors. It's good to seek guidance. Good to seek guidance. Next one, number eight is be humble. And this coming from Proverbs 3, verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Humility. And it talks about humility in verse uh, 13. Here what in Proverbs James. was that again? I'm sorry. What did you say? What Proverbs were eight? Yes, Proverbs three. Okay. 11. Verse verse seven. seven. Okay. And the last one is uh, number nine. <clears throat> Love God. Give Him everything you got. And that one's coming from Matthew twenty-two, verse thirty-seven, and it reads: Jesus replied. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. So, love him with all you got. Oh, I don't mean just something, everything. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's about all I have. I um, really felt the need to discuss this wisdom. It's important. It's very important in life to uh, have wisdom because if you live in that worldly wisdom, it's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> but the godly wisdom is going to keep you humble, keep you to walk in humility, to study God's word, to pray, to seek guidance, to, to love him. And it keeps you from being selfish, keeps you to trust him and to study his word, to study his word on a daily basis, not just on Sunday morning when the, somebody gets up there to preach and you be, oh, okay, here's the scripture. And then you walk out like, you don't pick up your Bible no more till the next Sunday. No, it's study God's word on a daily basis because that's where your wisdom is going to come from. 